All right, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, we are going to do a broadcast today about using digital credentials for teacher professional development. I am joined by the great and knowledgeable Rich Dixon of the Buck Institute for Education, uh, who has tremendous expertise in badging and professional development. Uh, so we're very excited to be able to share some of the insights and wisdom that we have uh, gathered about badging and teacher PD. So, uh, Rich, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background? You bet. Well, first of all, Ben, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I spent over 20 years uh, as a teacher doing professional development in a lot of different capacities uh, over the years. And one of the things that was most exciting about digital badges and some of the work that we're going to be talking about today is that it helps educators be able to articulate and communicate effectively new knowledge, skills, and experiences they have that help them better communicate their unique value and really document their learning as they go through their professional life. Absolutely. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I am Ben Rome. I am the co-founder of Badgeless.com, which is a digital credentialing website for building, issuing, and hosting open badges. Uh, so what we're going to do today is basically talk to you sort of in three phases. First, we're going to do a high level conversation about what digital credentials and specifically open badges are and what they can offer for teacher PD. Then we're going to go into a couple of different examples about uh, various organizations who have successfully opted adopted digital credentials for their PD programs. Uh, so we'll be talking both about professional development organizations to focus exclusively on running professional development programs. And we'll also be talking about schools and districts who have created professional development back programs for themselves, basically to leverage the knowledge that's sort of already inherent in the school or district um, to be able to share that uh, information with other teachers. Um, and uh, and ultimately to spread uh, awareness about whatever the district is uh, hoping to help teachers learn. Um, so with that said, then uh, what I'm going to do is switch to a, a screen share, and we're going to do um, uh, uh, show you a couple slides from a slide deck uh, that sort of give you a high level picture of uh, you know how digital credentials can be relevant inside badging. So let me just fire up my screen share here. Then we'll get this presentation going. So, um, oh, also, by the way, uh, I don't know how much I'll be able to track Twitter right now, but if you would like to ask us a question, uh, please feel free to use the hashtag badgepd or the hashtag teacherpd. Um, I use hashtag teacherpd a lot um, to talk about particularly badging for teacherpd, but teacherpd in general. That's a great hashtag. And then uh, we'll also use badge PD if you want to be talking about uh, specifically uh, questions around badges for, for professional development. Um, so the first question we have here is what are open badges? And so this is sort of the philosophy used by badge list. And I'll pass this over to Rich to, to hear some more thoughts on this. But uh, so at the high level, right, what we're looking at is digital credentials. Um, and digital credentials can mean basically any credential that's offered to recognize any piece of learning or activity um, in a digital format. So basically, as opposed to offering someone a certificate or a certification in you know, paper or PDF form, digital credentials are hosted on the web. Um, and one of the main values of digital credentials is that they uh, can be shared widely on the internet. Uh, so in BadgeList in particular, uh, we have ways uh, for people to share their open badges on various forms of social media, whether it be LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. Uh, but it goes more deep deep than that as well. Uh, so the, the first feature is that they're micro-credentials. So uh, people can actually break down their credentials into specific skills and competencies. Uh, they're also topic-focused resumes, so people can see exactly what you've learned and exactly what skills and competencies you've acquired and get a sort of more detailed picture about what, uh, what you know and what you can do. And finally, they, focus, they function as learning pathways as well, so uh, ways to actually structure uh, and guide the student through the knowledge space. Uh, so be, being able to explain, you know, if you want to become 
uh, you know, an expert in a certain area, these are the specific skills and competencies, and thus the steps that you'll need to take uh, in order to achieve that uh, that learning goal. Uh, Rich, what would you like to add about digital credentials or, or open badges specifically? That was a great overview. I'm just going to bookend it in that right. the phrase open badges, which we'll explain in a little bit, is really important. There's a lot of talk in K-12 circles and even in the higher ed around digital badges, the way that we graphically represent information. We'll talk about that in another slide. But the phrase open badges designates the fact that these credentials, these micro-credentials, as Ben just described, are things that the learner owns. In other words, you don't have to have an ongoing paid relationship with the provider of the micro-credential in order to go back and retrieve and show it. And in addition to that, the very technical specifications around how open badges work and some of the things we'll be talking about in the next slides are truly that, they're open. Uh, no one owns that architecture. It's something that an organization called IMS Global allows anyone to be able to use. And uh, that's an important part, I think, as an educator for me to get out there as well, is that there's a level of free and sharing with all of uh, the open badges as well. So we'll break that down in other slides, but just wanted to bookend that great explanation, Ben, with yeah. about open badges. Great, great. I love that idea of, uh, you, you know, the, the learner really owning the badge and like in, in some ways also owning the skill and competency that is expressed by that badge. So that's that's a great way to put that. OK, uh, so the next part here is just to give you a little more detail about what open badges are specifically. So open badges, uh, the value of them uh, were one of the great values of them is that basically they are a standard. who um, is the, the founder of Visual Thinkery. Uh, you can find him on Twitter, at Brian Mathers, Brian M. Mathers. Um, so it, he provides all kinds of just uh, amazing uh, visuals for uh, explaining how open badges work. And this one's one of my favorite. So it explains the idea that the badge image is only one part of an open badge. And actually, what's inside an open badge is all these different metadata items that are baked into the JSON, which is the code behind the badge. So what that means is that when you issue an open badge, not only are you issuing the, the badge image, which is what everybody sees, but it's also associated with all this metadata forever. So that includes the badge name, the URL, the criteria, which is basically what is required in order to earn it, the badge image, uh, the obvious part, and then also who is when it was issued, who received it, whatever uh, uh, tags there are. And it also, and this is the most important part for me, links to the evidence URL. So what we really believe at BadgeList is that the meaning of a badge is the learning evidence that was offered in order to earn that badge. And so part of the metadata of an open badge is that it will actually link to the learning evidence that was offered in order to earn that badge. And that is stored with the badge forever. So whenever I want to come back and see what is the meaning of this digital credential that someone has earned and is displaying, I can click that evidence URL and come back and, and see you know, in detail what someone did to earn that badge. Rich, you want to add anything here? Oh, that's great. I think for me, I'm going to juxtapose that with a badge that's not open, where it's just mm -hmm. the graphic. When you click on the image, nothing happens. It doesn't take you out to another web page that describes and lists all the different things that Ben just described, like the badge name, its criteria, all the things that are listed there on the right-hand side of that graphic. And so if you're wondering, hey, I think I know what a digital badge is. I've seen it in different applications. I've seen it on different websites. But I'm not really sure what makes it open. Go back to a badge that you might have. Click on it. If nothing happens, it's probably not an open badge. But if it takes you out, <laughs> all the things that Ben just described, you're in business. You are then interacting with an open badge. So um, I know that there are, especially for K-12 educators and students, a number of different platforms that provide badges. But you have to go into that particular platform to access it. You, you can't do anything else with it. You can't click on it, and it doesn't show all this other information. And um, I, I like to call those digital stickers. They have their place, but they really fall short of allowing learners and earners, whether adults or students, to be able to effectively communicate their accomplishments in the ways that Ben just described. Mm, very well said, very well said. All right, so continuing on, uh, this is just a quick slide. I won't linger on this too long, but really the value of badges is that 
they, your badge profile now can really follow you throughout your life. And so, uh, you know, this image is just meant to show that like if we're issuing badges to students in school, this badge profile will actually follow them throughout their school uh, into their secondary education and their collegiate education all the way up into their professional work uh, and, and will really serve as a resume ultimately. We see badges and, and this is something that's been seen by a lot of people. Badges ultimately we believe will replace the resume as a more effective form of uh, communication about what skills and competencies you have, particularly because they're verified by the institution that actually issued those badges. So we're really focusing today just on the professional development uh, aspect. So that's the sort of far right adult education. But one of the values of this for teachers who are actually, you know, uh, earning badges is that this will help them to see how badges can be used for their students in the classroom. So this is valuable in the long term as well. That's great. Um, yeah. So uh, I think next what we'll do is then jump into some specific examples of how various organizations have actually used uh, used open badges to structure their professional development organizations. Um, so the first organization that we'll be looking at today is Participate Learn. They're formerly VIF Learn. They're a professional development organization uh, help that supports um, global education. And uh, so I'm going to let Rich take it away and, and talk about Participate Learn's open badges. Excellent. So Participate is a great organization that's been around for over 30 years. And the friends that I have over there have been generous enough to share these slides with me. One of the things that I love about their work is that they help prepare teachers through uh, having access to high quality, new, if you will, budding technology uh, and making sure that helps improve their practice as a teacher so that therefore improves the experience and the achievement of their students. And then um, in addition to providing training around that leading edge technology, they also have a lot of online PD specifically built to ensure that teachers have the skill sets ongoing through the course of a year to be able to come back to and refine their practice and get even better. And within that, they offer a number of different topics. They also, just as an aside, do a lot of language acquisition uh, programs and this really neat cultural exchange between teachers in different countries. So um, let's move on to the next slide and take a closer look. So participate in particular and does the following. They have this great collection of information, um, lesson plans and videos and a whole bunch of other things that teachers can go through and search and find and then collect on their own, kind of curate or put together in a collection. Um, and part of that is some of the courses that Participate offers on a variety of different topics, whether it's 21st century learning skills or a number of different skills. It doesn't have to be just ed tech. The goal though is that these online learning opportunities are broken into smaller chunks, hence the micro-credential terminology and explanation that Ben gave earlier. And then, uh, Ben, do you want to go to the next slide? Sure. And then when educators move through and earn or learn uh, information, they're not just sitting there passively and absorbing it or doing comprehension checks. They're actually encouraged, this is what I love about participate, taking knowledge, putting it into practice, then reflecting upon their practice and how it's changed things for the better, documenting that, kind of gauging the effect of it, and then they submit it. And different peers will help provide feedback on uh, the application of that skill and its effectiveness around different parameters. And then once those skills have been verified, then a digital badge is issued. And the important thing that I'm leading up to with all of this is that with participate, when you click on a digital badge, it links out to all of the different bits of information that Ben already described, who issued it, why it's important. And uh, for that reason, they're in a great example to take a look at. So if you're looking as an educator to develop your own skill set and you want very specific training on a number of different topics that I'll let you explore when you go to participate.com, you'll be able to uh, document and have a recognized, verified way to be able to put a digital badge, say, in your resume or your email signature or on LinkedIn so that you can communicate new acquisition of skills. Yes, absolutely. I love that. And I think what's so cool about the way that the, this is structured and, and is shareable is that then, you know, regardless of where you did your professional development, this kind of gives everyone a picture of exactly what you've accomplished. And as Rich said, you can share that on your LinkedIn. And so then people you care about, 
Um, there's something I want to call back to actually earlier before I go on to the next example, uh, which is to talk about some of the the true values of uh, of digital credentials for for Teacher PD. Um, so I'm just going to jump back here. So one of the most important things is that I think we're coming out of an era in a way where um, Teacher PD was kind of you know you hear these these phrases like one and done the sit and get model, uh, where it's like one size fits all. You get uh, you get everyone in a room together and someone gives a seminar or a lecture and it's always about the same topic and everyone's sort of you know in there learning the same things well this can be very valuable for some people and of course you know I, i'm not saying that for instance like the lecture or seminar model is not a great way of offering pd but there needs to be an additional set of options for people in order to personalize their own learning and really to go through and be able to choose what skills and competencies they think will be most valuable for them and their professional careers most valuable for their students in the teaching context right you know if i teach a specific subject or i have a certain style of teaching or i use a blended classroom or i have a one-to-one -one chromebook school you know all of these different things really relate to people very specifically in the path that they want to take their careers and so open badges and and structuring pd around open badges really offers that uh, that personalized aspect of it um there's also this feature of competency-based instruction and assessment so this is the idea that rather than measuring pd in in just hours of professional development, we're actually able to measure PD in terms of competency-based instruction and assessment, like looking at what skills and competencies people have actually acquired, and then deciding to, to value professional development based on those skills and competencies rather than just seat time, which I think is a much more detailed way of, of going on to that. Um, before I go into the last item, Rich, do you wanna add anything else to these two? Yeah, just real quickly, I wanted to add that after providing professional development synchronously, meaning in person for years, uh, since the early 90s, one of the biggest challenges I had was trying to personalize the delivery of instruction. And so as Ben touched upon earlier, digital badges allow the recognition of online learning or even in-person learning in such a way that allows very small chunks of very personalized content to be recognized because different professionals are going to have different past experiences. And so digital badges have a way of being able to recognize the application of skill sets that were learned formally or informally and then applied and then awarded and recognized as such. And we can talk about a couple different use cases and as well as learning that's been done either online or uh, in person, but specifically the online portion is what I'm really excited about. Seeing educators be able to have voice and choice, what we call agency, within the uh, PD realm, the same kind of skills and experiences they're hoping to craft for their students. But I'll hold there. Ben, keep going. Uh. I love that. Yeah, voice and choice. That's beautiful. Um, so the last feature that we like to highlight is this idea of collaborative competition, which is kind of an evolution of the concept of gamification for us. So obviously, game mechanics uh, can be very valuable in inspiring engagement, particularly in professional development. Um, and so the idea of badges kind of gives people this sense of like leveling up. They can actually see their progress within the software. They can see all the badges they've earned and they can then see like, look, this is all, this is everything that I learned and this is the ways that I've grown as an educator uh, as I've started to earn badges. So this is really valuable um, for driving engagement and and then also it creates this kind of feeling of uh you know being able to see what everybody else has done which in some ways promotes competition and certainly we love to see it when teachers are you know trying to earn more badges than anybody else right because it shows that excitement for learning uh, you know that that kind of celebration of, of achievement but what we've really seen uh in in the communities that use badge list for teacher pd is this phenomenon of collaborative competition right that teachers are looking at what each other are doing in order to earn badges and they're seeing you know look this is what my colleagues have earned in the past week or or overall but then also because they can actually look at the learning evidence that's been offered in order to earn these badges what's so exciting about this is that then they can get inspiration from the projects that their colleagues and friends have done in order to earn these badges so uh, you know being able to look at that learning evidence and see how other teachers have used the platform or the uh, the a specific uh, PD item with their students then uh, allows them to to look at that evidence and get ideas for how they want to pursue their own professional development um, so I think that's that's a really exciting feature of this and, uh, and so with that I'll kind of use that to carry on the next couple of examples that we're going to talk you through here um, 
So the center, the University of Kansas Center for Research on Learning was one of our earliest adopters. And what I really love about this organization is that they have been around doing teacher PD for a very long time. I, I think uh, I think almost two decades, maybe even over two decades. And so they uh, have a very, very well established set of professional development items and all this great content for um, you know walking teachers through all kinds of different uh, writing PD to help their students become better better writers and they have tons of different really awesome content items. Well, they were very much uh, part of this model of, uh, you know, of, of direct synchronous professional development. And what they realized was that they wanted to take the step to kind of, you know, move their professional development system into the future. And so what they did was actually adopt uh, open badges and turn all of this content and all of the different items of their learning into a badge program, which really helped them as an organization, like step into the future and uh, you know become a, a, an organization that uh, is really focused on on new digital tools and allowing all the people who use their professional development to share and, and celebrate those those achievements. Um, so this is another example of an organization who uh, you know has been in the professional development for, space for a long time and has successfully adopted open badges in order to to help them uh, you know take the next step um, and, and become a really innovative professional development organization. Uh, so beyond the KUCRL, uh, there are also a lot of great examples of schools and districts that are running their own professional development programs. And this really gets me excited because I always see so much knowledge and innovation, particularly in the TOSAs, the tech coaches, the blended learning coaches that are already working inside of schools and districts um, to share all of the knowledge about apps that they're uh, that are approved for their uh, for their school or district and you know a lot of teachers you know maybe they're comfortable imagine you're like a one-to-one -one Chromebooks organization a lot of teachers um, you know will use maybe five of the approved apps but a lot of these organizations will have like 60 approved apps and so actually one example of this is the Turner Unified School District so they created this program called badges for bears um, so, uh, Sarah Tidwell, Leisha Walterman, and Travis Kleinow developed this system uh, to basically share all of their knowledge about all of the different approved uh, apps for their one-to-one -one Chromebooks district. Um, and so what they wanted to do, like there's only so many of them and they can only go and model so many of these different uh, these different apps. So what they did was create this badge program to explain to all the other use uh, how to use these apps. And so what they did was structure it based on like an initial sort of entry level uh, badge, which they call the cub badge. And then they have a higher level one called the golden bear level, uh, which uh, basically this entry level one is just a, a first steps playing around. As you can see, like literally the required evidence for earning this badge is just play around with book steps, go and use it with audio and then start to use it with your students. The higher level one then is to actually start to really get uh, you know, engaged with the software with your students and submit several student learning examples uh, that then provide this evidence uh, to the um, you know, to the professional development leads within the district that shows that you've really adopted this software and are using it within your system. So uh, feel free to reach out to me and I will uh, tag uh, our friends at Turner um, with their uh, uh, with their Twitter handle so that you can ask them questions about how they structured this really amazingly awesome system for uh, you know for teaching everybody at, at their school about these different apps. Um, the last thing I want to highlight uh, here uh, before we kind of move back into a, a closing discussion um, is that we actually at Badgeless created a teacher PD gallery. So. Um, Mari Venturino uh, from Sweet, Sweetwater Schools down in San Diego and the Turner Unified School District were kind enough to actually share their badges uh, with us. So what we've done is created this teacher PD gallery. It's badgeless.com slash PD gallery. You can go in there now and actually look at these badges and see what all of the different required evidence is for earning these badges. Um, and one of the really cool things is that if you click this copy badges button, 
The Teacher PD Gallery will actually allow you to copy all of these badges directly into your own learning group to allow you to get a quick start on setting up your Teacher PD program at your school or district. So then uh, you can go in and edit the badges and change them to make them school specific or district specific for your use case. But this is so cool because it, it will allow you to then see everything that you want to, you know, all the different ideas people have had for badging. Um, and then, uh, you know, it'll allow you to just pull these badges directly into your group to, to get it fired up. Um, so let's talk some more about some other examples. Rich has some great examples of other groups and districts that have been uh, able to adopt badges uh, for, for their own use case. One that I'm really excited about is coming online this summer, and it's from the Coxsackie Athens Unified School District in New York. And what they've done is they've gotten the buy-in from administration, the union, the teachers, uh, support staff, so that as teachers go through their year, as part of their professional learning plan, their goals for their professional growth, they get to choose a selection of different skills and outcomes that they want to achieve to improve their skill set. And if they choose to go through and learn on their own online through content that that district has created, those teachers if they've done up to eight hours worth of learning, can in a sense buy a day back, meaning there's a professional development day in January or so of 2018, this next school year coming in, and then the end of the school year, June of 2018. And so if teachers have done one or more of those days, they can get, or worth of learning, eight hours, they can get that day in January or the day in June as time off to do whatever they want to do because they've already shown that they've done the learning on their own. I love examples of that because a digital badge recognizes that learning and then allows those teachers to communicate it and allows everyone within the district to understand the skill sets that that person learned. And I think it's just an innovative way to recognize learning that makes a real difference and practical difference in the classroom. Absolutely. And there's so many different great examples of districts that have adopt, uh, adopted badges and created these incentive programs to associate with the badge program that really gets teachers engaged. So like the collaborative competition and the gamification aspect is one way to absolutely start engagement. But if your district can actually find a way to associate other incentives with these PD programs, like this just takes it up to the next level of engagement for everyone that's there. So I know um, the Project Advance, which is a project of the Chapel Hill Car. Uh, they gave all of their teachers an across the board rage raise and then there are further uh, pay incentives for actually completing all of the different phases on the badge pathway of the project advanced program um, I know also various districts and states are starting to recognize badges as uh, actual evidence of teacher PD so I know now the state of North Carolina actually recognizes badges as teacher PD, so now instead of trying to submit your teacher hours or like a, uh, you know, a certificate that says you did X number of hours at a conference or whatever, you can literally submit your badges to the state to help uh, to get recognition for your your required teacher PD to keep your license current and you know whatever other requirements your schools or, or districts have. Um, so I, I know that the Houston School District is is also recognizing badging, and we're starting to see this crop up across the country now, where uh, you know states. Uh, districts are accepting badges as evidence of, of professional development and I think that's going to really you know start a domino effect where ultimately we will get to move beyond the old model of teacher professional development um, and we will see badges ultimately come to replace the old forms of of measurement and structuring for um, for professional development uh, and this is not only in education but I think in, in a lot of areas of professional development so very exciting to see this movement uh, sort of catch on and um, and people start to recognize the value of badges um, for all kinds of professional development um, so uh, any parting words rich we're almost up on our half hour I think the best encouragement I can have is to dive in deep, take a look at Badge List, uh, interact with it. The great thing is you can get started for free without any pay to get going with it. And I know that as teachers start thinking about how they're going to document their own learning and work within the context of districts, sometimes districts feel overwhelmed not knowing that there are resources like Badge List that are out there. They don't have to do the work of creating a platform. And what Badge List provides is for those of us that are educators to focus on our core competency, which is content and then partner with somebody, partner with Badge List, 
in order to do the technical aspect of this. It makes it so much easier and there's no extra big, huge personnel that you've got to employ and then have a website developed specifically for that. Uh, ben and Hank and team have already taken care of that for you. So I think that's a real benefit of using Badgeless. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, uh, for saying all that. And certainly we are very dedicated to our customer support at Badgeless. If you have any questions about Badgeless, either before you start using it or while you're using it, um, I am reachable in the lower right corner of the screen on our intercom, which is, which is an in-app chat device. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Ben Jerome. Rich is at Rich EdTech on Twitter. Thank you all so much for joining us, or if you're watching the recorded version, then thanks for checking it out. Um, we've really enjoyed this, and we will catch you down the road.